the Sexual Assault Examination Kit, better known as a rape kit. The backlogs in testing these little white boxes have been making headlines, but state crime lab officials say many people don't understand what goes into examining the kits for potential DNA evidence. Can you just run the test? And it's like, mm, we, we could, but there's 20 items or more that you could actually test with and inside this kit. When we say we don't focus on the kit, we fo focus on the case because there's a lot of other evidence that kind of comes along with these. Um, sometimes you have clothing, you have bedding, you have um, physical evidence from uh, latent fingerprints, uh, trace evidence, um, others that's not related to DNA. After a forensic nurse uses the kit to collect DNA evidence from a victim, law enforcement sends the box to the state crime lab. The first stop is a serology lab, where analysts decide how to test the evidence inside. <clears throat> but if you look through that, there's just a lot of different uh, potential items of evidence to test. Inside each one of those is a potential swab. For larger pieces of evidence, the lab workers will use screening tests, like this alternative light test, to find potential DNA evidence. Another test, called an AP test, can also show whether seminal fluid is present. Put the dye on it, what's going to happen is that it will turn into a purple color if it's positive, and if it's negative, it will just remain clear. She took her SNP that was a positive presumptive test, so you put that into a separate little testing tube, and then we take it over and we use what's called the Christmas tree stain. Mm -hmm. It's basically just a two-step staining process with a red and a green dye. So we're looking for the sperm heads. This is kind of getting it ready for DNA, and the swabs will be cut, put into um, a rack uh, of, um, well, they could be put into one of these tubes sent off to DNA for testing. At Utah's crime lab, robotics will soon handle the next step. Using a chemical process, the machine will extract the DNA from the sample, clean it, and count how many cells of DNA are present. A DNA sample is then removed from the tube and placed into a small plate with multiple wells. Next, the extracted DNA is taken to a clean room, where copies of the DNA cells are made in order to have a large enough sample to read. Another machine reads the DNA, and a software program will convert what it sees into a digital graph of colorful peaks and numbers which can be used to identify a person. Now it's back to the humans for the remaining work. Analysts compare the readouts to try to find a DNA match. They will also enter DNA profiles into CODIS, a federal database with DNA profiles of anyone who has been arrested for a violent felony. If the suspect profile matches another offender sample already in CODIS, the analyst will need to confirm the match. They will do that by getting the offender's CODIS sample from storage and retesting it to verify it matches the DNA sample taken from the rape kit. Then analysts inform law enforcement about the hit and police will get another sample from the suspect to test. Then the process at the crime lab starts over again to test that sample.